Hello everybody and welcome to a science of short. I'm sorry to say that the next science of video is taking a bit longer than I expected. So in the meantime, here's a look at one of the many pathogens found throughout cells at work. When choosing a pathogen to look at, I had a wide range of topics. But in the end, I decided to focus on the pathogen present in the first episode. Streptococcus pneumoniae, otherwise known as the bacteria that causes pneumonia. Cells at work represents pneumococcus as a humanoid virus with a large number of abilities to help it escape detection and to protect it from the aggressive pursuit of white blood cells. Now fortunately, we have over a hundred years worth of research and intense study to get an understanding of the fundamental aspects of its physiology, pathogenesis and immunity, so there's plenty to cover in this short video. Just from a visual standpoint, there's a ton of details back to their bacterial origins. And the main one that might surprise you is its colour. This blue colouring might seem like an attempt to make it look more alien compared to human cells. But in actuality, this is in reference to pneumococcus being a gram-positive bacterium. Gram staining is a method of cell identification developed by Hans Christian Gram in 1884, and it uses a chemical known as crystal violet dye. Cells which are gram-positive have a thick cell layer called a peptidoglycan, which is made up of many sugars and amino acids that form a mesh-like layer outside of the plasma membrane. Whilst this cell wall is present in almost all prokaryotic cells, its thickness is significantly greater in gram-positive bacteria, being around 20 to 80 nanometers, compared to gram-negative bacteria, whose peptidoglycan layer is normally between 7 and 8 nanometers. When the gram-positive cell is coated in a layer of crystal violet dye, the thicker cell wall holds onto this dye and colours the cell blue. Ok, so besides their colour, what other features are shared between the real pneumococcus bacteria and its anime equivalent? How about we look at the many tentacles that come off of the pneumococcus's head and shoulders. These have long claw tips at their ends and they use them alongside their claw hands to fight the body's defences. There are a few things that these tentacles could be in relation to bacteria. The first is the bacterial flagellum, which is primarily a mobility organelle that allows some bacteria to perform chemotaxis. However, pneumococcus has a cocci structure, meaning that it's effectively just a ball of damaging ability, and this means it has no flagellum. What it does have are smaller hair-like structures called pili. These are more likely to be what pneumococci's tentacles are based on. Pili, otherwise known as fimbriae, can be produced by both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. In the pneumococcus bacteria, there are two main pili, PI1 and PI2, which are involved in cell adherence. As well as the pneumococcus having its many tentacles, it also has a hexagonal capsule. This provides the cell with a defense against the neutrophils' attacks and phagocytosis, as well as creating a way for the pneumococcus to escape when the neutrophil attempts to defeat it. Bacterial capsules are usually made up of hydrated polysaccharides. These polysaccharides are made up of a large number of hexagon-shaped monomers. These are called monosaccharides and they are carbohydrate sugars. This explains why the capsule in the show looks like a hexagonal net. As I mentioned before, the capsule in the show protects the pneumococcus as well as allowing it to evade capture by neutrophils. This isn't unlike what the bacterial capsule is used for in the pneumococcus bacteria. In fact, the pneumococcus capsule is considered the most important factor in its ability to cause pneumonia, with mutant strains of the bacteria losing the ability to form a capsule and they were rapidly defeated by white blood cells in studies. This capsule not only allows the bacteria to escape any white blood cells, but also allows them to escape any mucus in the airways and inhibits its recognition by immunoglobulins. Finally, we'll take a look at how the pneumococcus is able to damage host cells when in the body. Pneumococcus produces a toxin called pneumolysin. Pneumolysin is able to bind cell membranes containing cholesterol molecules. From here, it forms pores, which may lead to the death of host cells. But this isn't all that pneumolysin can do. It also regulates the complement system, stopping the pneumonococcal bacteria from being recognised by the body's natural defences. Some studies have even shown that pneumolysin can cause double-strand DNA breakages and is regulate the production of reactive oxygen species within cells. These reactive oxygen species are unstable molecules that contain oxygen and they relax easily with other molecules in the cell. These are used in the immune system as a signaling molecule. 
In fact, the sensitivity of T cells to these reactive oxygen species leads to them producing effects ranging from increased T cell proliferation at low levels to cell death by apoptosis. This is caused by reactive oxygen species inducing oxidative stress in T cells and inducing the expression of the FAS receptor and FAS ligands which cause programmed cell death by apoptosis when bound together. There are so many different reactions caused by these reactive oxygen species and you can see most of them in this diagram. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the pneumococcus bacteria. Of course there is a lot more detail but this is a pretty good start. If you enjoyed this video then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And to combat the ever changing and frustrating YouTube algorithm make sure you share the video to help my channel grow. If you have any particular scientific subject or topic you'd like to see me cover in the future then please tell me in the comments down below. Or if you'd rather send me a message directly on Twitter. In the next video we'll be looking at the wide variety of white blood cells present throughout the series and seeing how they compare to their real world counterparts. But until then this has been a science of shorts on the pneumococcus bacteria. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for game based content then you can join me over on Toggle Jam Plays where every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday I show off a different game. Or if you want to support my channel even further you could also contribute to my Patreon where you'll get behind the scenes access to the creation of all videos as well as being able to vote on what the next science of video will be.